In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the charging port on the iPhone X or the iPhone X. To begin the repair, if the phone is on, make sure that you power it down. Then take a Pentalob screwdriver and remove the two screws from the bottom of the device. Just before I go any further with this repair, I will let you know that I'll be using a magnetic mat to store the screws. There's lots of different screws of different sizes to remove during the teardown. So make sure that you keep organized by using something like a magnetic mat. Once those screws are removed, we're gonna take a single-sided razor blade and we're gonna make a small gap or incision at the very bottom of the device between the chassis and the edge of the screen. And we're gonna lever that to make a larger gap, just big enough to fit a guitar pick in there. And then we can slide that along the right-hand edge, the bottom edge, and this left-hand edge to separate the screen from the chassis. Don't worry about the top edge because we're gonna lift it from the bottom like that, give it a wiggle from side to side, and then open it up like opening the back cover of a book. Now that we've got the phone open, we can prop up the screen using a stable heavy object like a mug. And then we're gonna take a Y000 tri-wing screwdriver and remove the five screws that hold down this shield that holds down all the connections for the logic board on the iPhone X. Remove the shield using some fine tweezers. Then we're gonna disconnect the battery connector with a plastic spudger. It's a good idea before continuing with the repair to test that your new charging port is going to work. And the easiest way to do this is to disconnect the existing charging port, fold it back a little bit, and then get your new part and I call this dry fitting, and you're just gonna plug it in without anything else attached. Reconnect the battery now, then just very carefully connect your lightning connector. If the phone shows that it's charging, it means that your problem is most likely the charging port, and you can proceed with the repair. We'll now disconnect our new charging port and continue with the disassembly of this device. We need to disconnect everything attached to this board, starting off with the screen, which is held down by this connector here and this one just here. Now this is the ear speaker, which is attached to the screen. So make sure that you disconnect that and then just pull it up. It is stuck to the flex cable there. So just pull it carefully. That'll allow you to remove the screen now and we'll store that safely for later. Let's start from bottom to top, disconnecting all these flex cables. Pop out the front camera from its little housing that it sits in, fold it forwards, and then disconnect the Wi-Fi antenna from the top of the board. We can leave that just sort of dangling around. It's not gonna do any harm. Just be careful not to whack it around. Now that all the flex cables are disconnected, we're gonna remove this screw here and this screw here. And then of course, don't forget to eject the SIM tray because you won't remove the board without it. Now there should just be this screw to remove now, which has got a little shield attached to it. Look, so make sure that that comes away with it. And that should allow us to lift up this logic board and remove it from the housing just like that. Make sure you keep this nice and safe because this is a pretty valuable and important part of the device. And then I'll just pull that up to release it a little bit. And whilst I'm thinking about it, I'll also add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol underneath that flex cable so that that's soaking in, softening the adhesive ready for pulling it out. Moving on to the bottom of the phone, we've got a little bit of peripheral hardware in the form of this loudspeaker and tactic engine to remove as well as a bracket across the front. We'll start off with the bracket. That's held down with a tri-wing screw in this bottom right corner. Another couple either side of the charging port. One more tri-wing directly below the tactic engine. And then we can swap over to the crosshead screw and remove the two on the left side of the tactic engine. The one in the very, very bottom left corner. I'm not sure that has to be removed, but we'll go for it anyway, just on I did forget one tri-wing screw just here and one more crosshead screw just here. Let's use our tweezers now to lift up this shield. And if you look closely as I pull that back, you can see that it is connected to the charging port just here. So disconnect that before lifting it up. Next, we've got the taptic engine to remove. That's the connector for this is hidden under that little metal shield. 
remove the shield, then use the spudger to disconnect the flex cable there. Then you can use your tweezers to lift out the loudspeaker first. You might find that it's stuck down a little bit here. Now there's another flex cable to detach here and tweezers for the Taptic engine. Now we've got a few standoff screws to remove. So we're gonna start with this one, this one, and this one. And finally, we're gonna tip the phone up on its bottom edge and remove the two crosshead screws that hold the charging port into the bottom of the phone, just here. There's just this plastic little shield cover jig thing here. Remove that and then get your tweezers underneath your microphone because you're gonna wanna separate that from the chassis. Now we use the sharp tweezers to begin separating the charge port from the chassis of the phone. There might be other guides out there will tell you to remove the battery for this repair, but I don't think we need to. The charging port flex cable sits underneath the edge of the battery here. Make sure that this screw is removed to free up the antenna cable. But apart from that, you should find that with a little bit of persuasion, maybe a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, you should be able to free up the charge port by wiggling it side to side eventually allowing you to pull it out. In my case, I've just snapped it. That doesn't matter. We're not keeping this charge port and it is broken. I was gonna suggest that anyway, believe it or not. Swiftly moving on now, we've got the new charging port. Make sure that it's a pulled part because aftermarket ones just suck for this job. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna get this little bit here and we're just gonna thread it underneath the battery sliding it up just like that the isopropyl alcohol should act as a little bit of a retardant of the adhesive stopping it from sticking down but you can see that that's gone under that battery pretty nice and it's ready to line up to the bottom reinstallation is just a case of reversing the steps that we've just taken starting off with these two screws in the bottom make sure that they're in nice and tight now we can line up the microphone before getting the jig into place just here, that little plastic thing. That plastic shield there is held down with a standoff screw, secure that into place. Now we've got the two standoff screws either side of the charging port. And then I'm gonna spin the phone around this time and go for the Taptic engine next, using my tweezers to re-secure the FPC connector just here, get it lined up and apply pressure. Now I'm just gonna install one of the two screws on this left-hand edge of the Taptic engine. Just looking here, we just need to neaten that up a little bit. Then we can replace the loudspeaker now, placing it down, then just lining it up the best that we can. You just gotta fold over this FPC connector now and apply pressure. Then we can put the little shield that holds that down on there. It's a long tri-wing screw that holds that one down. Our metal brackets next. We just gotta make sure that that FPC connector lines up and is pushed down and secure. Then we can fold it over, then reinstall all the screws that hold that down. We've got a crosshead screw here, another crosshead screw here, one more in this bottom left, and I believe the rest are tri wings, but I have been wrong before. Tri wing screw here, two either side of the lightning connector, and then the final one is just in this bottom right corner here. That completes this bottom area. We'll move up and get that little tri wing screw reinstalled on the antenna coaxial cable just here. Now we'll make sure that that's sort of out of the way because we're gonna reinstall the logic board now. The easiest way that I've found to do this is the same way as we pulled it out, just make sure that all these flex cables are sort of peeled back because we're gonna sort of thread this with this long pointed end first underneath the camera flex cables and 
we're going to sort of thread it through, wiggling it from side to side, making sure no flex cables get stuck under it, and then securing it down. It might take you a couple of tries to get it lined up and you might find that you get some of these cables caught, but just persevere with it. It is quite difficult the first time around and you're probably frustrated because I make it look easy, but there was a day when it was a mammoth task for me. Moving on, we've got one crosshead screw just here and a slightly longer one just here. And that's gonna secure our board into place. We can fold over our charging port flex cable now and then just while it's on my mind and I'm putting screws in, we've got this little shield there and the crosshead screw that holds that down. Now we'll start reinstalling all these connectors and cables. Don't do the battery, so that's that one there. But you can do the rest of them. Cameras. And then this top camera flex. Let's fold this over now and reattach our Wi-Fi cable. I use the back end of the tweezers quite a bit. I find it is a little bit more nimble than my fingers. Reinstall the camera. And then to line this front camera up, we're just gonna slide it under, making sure that it latches under these little brackets that house it. We're very nearly there now. We just need to make sure that the edge of the chassis is nice and clean. So go ahead and use your tweezers to remove any remaining dust and moisture resistant seal that's left behind on the edge. It can be stubborn in places, but it is an important job to make sure that the new dust and moisture resistant seal is a good fit and sticks well. Once the thick of the adhesive's removed, we're gonna take a, a nice stiff brush and clean away any of the dust, gunk, and adhesive that's left behind, making sure that this edge of the chassis is absolutely squeaky clean. We can now take a new dust and moisture resistant seal, lining it up in the top left corner, left hand edge, and then it should follow suit along the rest of the chassis. Apply pressure with the flat edge of the squidger just to make sure that it's secured down properly. Then you can peel off the top layer of the adhesive. Now we'll go ahead with realigning the screen. I always make sure this connector gets lined up first, followed by this one, and then the ear speaker flex cable can go on next. And finally, the battery connector. This would be a very good time to test this again before sealing it up. But because you don't want to watch me test a phone, I'm going to reinstall this shield over the top of all those connectors, then secure it down with the five tri-wing screws that we removed at the beginning of this video. Just make sure that that's a short screw that goes in there. I've seen a few people try and put this long screw into that short hole and cause irreparable damage to the logic board. So just be aware of the screws as you're going through the repair. Just as a little side note, sometimes this flex cable can easily get trapped underneath the shield here. And I think this flex is showing a bit of signs of damage from that. Just make sure that it doesn't sit in by just pulling it outwards a little bit whilst you're installing the screw. There's just one last layer of, a, of film to remove from my adhesive seal. A lot of these are different, so yours might not have one. Now we can fold the screen down, making sure that it lines up in the top edge first, then apply pressure to secure it along the rest of the edges. Don't forget to reinstall your SIM tray and SIM card if there was one in there. And then of course the two pentalobe screws at the bottom of the device. Whenever you tested a repair after a charging port replacement, I strongly advise booting the device by plugging it into the lightning connector and making sure that the 
connecting it will cause it either to charge or prompt to boot. Because this phone is now charging and there will be some tests to do once the device comes back on. But in terms of replacing the charging port, our job is now complete. I hope your job went as well as ours. Thank you for watching and see you next time.